Hello, welcome to the virtual world. My first guest, who's an, one of the artists of my art fashion concept, is Jody Morlock. Hi, Jody. Hi, Pat. How you doing? I'm doing well. You know, Jody and I have known each other for many years. You know, Jody, on your own, uh, you were always artistic, but you developed the painting style. I think I'm inspired by other creative people. I mean, you know, we come together. And it's just, a family. We're like atoms bouncing off of each other. Yes. And I've worked in film and television, so I'm always drawn to a kind of sophisticated look, which I never, ever had. I was always such a downtown kid. So it's kind of like, you know, you want to, for me, I always wanted to dress like a Debbie Mazar, you know, the like sexy, coquette. But I love that kind of look, because I never dressed like that. When I called Jody about our virtual fashion presentation, Jody told me, Pat, I'm not painting clothing anymore. I'm not very interested. I don't really care for the fashion. I'm painting aprons. I said, perfect, you're painting aprons? I just submitted an original recipe to Bruno Maillé, and I would love to work your aprons with the recipe. Well, the reason why I felt that way is mainly because of COVID going on. And so what am I thinking about? Cooking. Cooking. And all my friends are cooking. You can find my original Armenian Italian recipe on Instagram, Bruno Maillet's Meals. Meet Scooter LaForge. Scooter is an artist that was in my Bowery store. I'm definitely grateful that I met you and that I came into your store. It sort of just got me in my groove here and I have deep, deep roots with you, really deep roots. And I feel the same way about yeah. you. What I love about your work is the sense of humor and how you incorporate it into monsters, clowns. It's just such an original expression that you have and it's all yours. When you look at them at first, there, there's bright colors, there's stuff that can be looked at as very cute. But if you look deeper, there's a dark sense of humor in there, and it's a reflection of these dark times that we're going through now. And right now, you know, my mood is very dark and very anxiety-ridden. So that kind of comes out in what I'm putting on these painted garments. They're paintings for me, and an extension of my paintings, and I consider them art. So, you know, they're just walking paintings or sculptures. I hope you never lose great balance between the darkness and the sense of humor. Thank you. That is yours. Thank you. Meet Stud Muffin, AKA Kyle Brinsfield, the stutter of our gallery. Hello. You worked in my Bowery store. Yeah, absolutely. And when you worked in my shop, I was like, this is not a salesperson. This is an artist. I said, Kyle, you're an artist. Go do your thing. And that is how we started our relationship in art fashion. You know, Kyle, studs are a trend, but you have managed to turn it into your brand identity. And it keeps staying fresh. Like you said, my brand identity heavily revolves around studs and spikes. And it's just something that I too thought was like kind of a trend moment when it started off, but then I kind of just like kept working with it. We kind of like came to the same conclusion that it's more than a trend, the whole business model to be like built around it. And like people always want something custom studded and spiked or, you know, something off the rack. So we have both. So exactly. You kind of pushed that for me and I appreciate that. You know, there was a, there's a designer, he moved out west. His name is Glenn Yank. And he was inspired in the same, similar way that you were. Mm -hmm. But his inspiration came off of motorcycles. And he made jewelry, and he took gears, and he made them in bangle bracelets. And you remind me, uh, your process is different, but there's a parallel line. Oh, I appreciate that, thank you. I think it's funny because how I first got introduced to your shop was I was working in bars around Chelsea, and I started making outfits just to work or go out in. And um, from then I just kind of like kept bringing you random pieces and you would sell them for me and I'd make a side check. <laughs> so that's always been really cool. I like the idea of a side check. Yeah, totally. <laughs>
me kiss. A kiss's work is, I would describe it as a cross between goth, punk rock, uh, and then I said, throw a little glamour in there for our clients, because they all appreciate a little glamour. So uh, she's uh, created very unique pieces for our gallery. You work in silicone, which is something very original and unique. You apply them to jackets, you apply them on their own. What got you into the silicone thing? I just really wanted to focus on one, one specific medium. I did a show and I really just wanted to have this dripping factor. I used to be inspired by graffiti and splattering paint everywhere. I met an FX makeup artist and he primarily works with silicone. So it's actually used for mold making and for FX makeup. Um, so he showed me this material because I wanted this dripping effect. I decided to use this material and I fell in love. And I just started testing out every which way on mannequins and it actually comes up first as like a liquid and then it cures to like a rubber material. And it's very flexible and resilient to water. And You know, it's one of the most original applications yeah. of artistry that I have seen. I think I'll start with the accessories because I actually, I'm a very accessorized person. As you can see, I'm very detail oriented. I pierced these severed Barbie doll heads, pierced them, hung them from some earrings, made them the zip holes for like the clutches and the clutches were really cool. So it started there, I think, um, with like some crazy verbiage. And then I just wanted to play with mixing like fluorescent colors, just to be like relevant with, you know, what's going on right now. Like for instance, Lady Gaga, you know, her colors were really like pink and black and purple. And I just wanted to start playing with these colors more and mixing them. The world of silicone for you <laughs> has a huge future. Yeah, there's just so many things I haven't tapped into yet either, I think. So I I keep reinventing myself. I feel like I'm pushing to do new things and I'm gonna continue to do it. Well, you know, reinventing yourself is part of the game yeah. because otherwise it just becomes boring. Yeah, oh my God. And creative people <laughs> cannot nope. endure boredom. Nope. Presenting Jonathan Bristler. Jonathan, I'm so happy that you're back with us in our art gallery. Your work continues to be signature to you. You also painted beautiful murals in my Bowery location, as well as my 8th Street location. The uniqueness about your paintings are how you mix outer space with ancient Rome. Where do you get that inspiration? It's wonderful. I think that the inspiration for the ancient world comes from when I was a child, because my parents were artists, and we used to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Your work is like the ancient in the day glow color. It's so uniquely signature you. I think the cosmos just comes from a sense of the fascination of the unknown. You know, oh. it draws you in into this sort of surreal atmosphere. What you do is mix your painterly side now with the fashion side. And I think your work sits beautifully in fashion. I am a graduate of FIT. And in 1977, I got an associate's degree in fashion illustration. I see. So fashion was really what I studied in school. Right, so and it became a thread in the weave. Thread in the weave is a perfect way to say it. Um, I love fashion. I mean, it's a very small distinction between fashion, art, and decorating. I'm very grateful to be sitting here with you today. I just wanted you to know that. Believe me, it's artists like yourself and the others that make my life interesting. This is Mox and Mohawk. Uh, we got to know one another when I still had my Bowery store and they brought to us beautifully done, unique and uh, original uh, jewelry. So when we first met, we were still doing um, arts and crafts festivals and fairs. Yeah, <laughs> we were working with brass mostly. That's what we were taught on at FIT. We went to school at FIT. Together. So we started with brass making our subtle vulgarity cuffs. We wanted to kind of take back some of the swear words that maybe are used as insults or seen as inappropriate. And take we did ownership. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, but those words, people responded to them. They liked yeah. them. Oh. I was, you know, 
a little, not shocked, but I was surprised. We were surprised too, yeah. really, we were. Yeah, and we um, we cut it all out by hand. We cut use a hand. jeweler saw, so we're like bench jewelers, essentially. Yeah. We do it the very traditional way, and we hand sand it, and uh, we don't polish it by hand. We have a, a machine that polishes it, but everything else is totally 100%. by hand. Yeah. Yeah. Madly made. <laughs> we're using brass and then stainless steel. We use a whole lot of different materials, and now we're uh, moved on to plexiglass pieces. Kind of a, a nod to the mod. Nod to the mod, yes. <laughs> nod to the mod yeah. styles. See, I'm a mod girl. 60s, yeah. <laughs> 70s, some of the disco era type pieces. Plexiglass is really easy for us to work with as well. It gives us a little bit more range, and like so we can do the bigger pieces without having a ton of weight. Their brand is Sex Fit Avenue spelled S-E-K-S. And they are the newest members of our gallery. I find their work humorous fashion. I love the way they repurpose something, but in a humorous way. I'm the designer of the company. I take care of all the creations. I sew everything myself. I do everything myself. And with Will, he gives me his ideas in the business way of the, of the brand. We're a good balance as a team. Able, everything really passes through his hand. Everything is done in-house, so there's nothing. We, we don't even ask, oh, can you screen print this? Can, everything is done by Abel at our place. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I handle the product photos, PR, just getting us out there. Well, the name Sex Fifth Avenue came from two things. One is it's really important in our brand to focus on upcycling because of all the waste that fashion creates in the world. And this is something that we see department stores have a big foot in just because that's where a lot of mass marketing is, mass production, and there's a lot of dead stock and waste. Our company is kind of the antithesis to big market stores. Nothing is mass produced. That's one side, and the other side is being in New York, having that sex, the Fifth Avenue. It's just an automatic way to feel the vibe, I think, of what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's very there. clever and very humorous. <laughs> In this specific little capsule that we create, we reuse different jackets to reconstruct other pieces. One of the jackets is made for two of the looks. We try to play a little bit with what's happening now. So we create these bags, they're Purell bags, so you can take everywhere. There's a clear look because you know the separation of plastic and just, you know, some kind of separation now, basically. We used kind of trash bag material for one of the pieces because we like to say we turn trash into trash. <laughs> That's great, that and should be on it. We turn trash into trash. Right, <laughs> a lot of things up our sleeve the for sure. The future sounds good. So we're excited. <laughs> David Dalrymple. Hello. How long have we been together. It's 1990. 90, yeah, 30 years. In one way or another, I don't think we'll ever not be together. Yes, absolutely. You know, as you are an experienced professional designer, I appreciate that because it makes your clothing made well and to be proud of. And then the other part is the sexy feeling that you give it. So I would say that's your signature, David. Well, first of all, thank you. That makes me feel so good. I'm only telling the truth. I, you know, designed for that person who's definitely not the wallflower. He or she, or they, like to stand out in a crowd, you know? And, uh, yes. And I love the body. I love I have appreciation for the human body, so sexy just comes with that. Over the years, you have amassed a list of celebrities Britney Spears. Britney Spears in the early 2000s. Yes, yeah. Beyonce. Beyonce for one of her Target commercials. And through all the years that we've worked together, now we also live right around the block from each other. So we'll never be apart, that yes. I can say. <laughs> yes, we're neighbors among everything else. <laughs> yeah. Neighbors among everything else. You've met most of the artists and designers represented in my gallery. We are missing three because of distance. 
For example, Lara Padilla. I met her in Miami at Art Basel, and I just took to her and she took to me, and she became a regular uh, contributor to the gallery. Plus, she's a voguer. And her art, a lot of it looks figurative like dancers. What inspired me as an artist is life. Many of my art pieces portray power and beauty through the observation of delicate details of the human body. I am a creator with an eclectic but innovative style. There are no two pieces alike. These are exclusive designs and one of a kind. She is a sweetheart and I'm so glad I met her. The works consist of giving new life to each piece that is in disuse, in redefining and transforming them into something unique, into a work of art. This look represents the figure of the snake as a compendium of the entire philosophy of the universe, although it has traditionally been associated with templation. It symbolizes wisdom, perfection and dynamism of the real. These looks portray the power and beauty of the female figure. The feminist thematic is mainly exhibited in the form of big hands. Joe Patavio, a one-of-a-kind clothing designer, he presented himself to me in Miami as well. I love his sense of humor and his oversizedness. I'm usually inspired by people watching in the streets of New York City, Miami or LA. My aesthetic is drawn from 80s and 90s hip-hop and punk rock, all infused into one. The silhouettes that we would see then were all oversized and big shoulders and big baggy pants, and that's why I draw most of my inspiration for my aesthetic. My line is genderless, so it plays a big part when I'm trying to make one-of-a-kind pieces for all genders and all sizes. My technical process is pretty basic. It starts off with a blank mood board, which I start filling in with images of things I've been collecting or seeing. Then I just go fabric shopping. I start cutting fabric and sewing and draping and back to the mannequin. And it's just a process on, that I do completely on my own. It's pretty fun. One of my favorite pieces this season has to be the long oversized dress shirt. I just cut up a shirt in half. I started adding layers of pieces of different black and white fabrics, and I just kept adding on. It was like building a building. Dope. These pink lips, AKA designer Iris Bonner. Iris was in my shop on the Bowery with her t-shirts, and the gals love them. That's how I first met Pat. I remember going to Pet store and I was just, I'm like, yo, I can really see my work in here. Like she gets it, this is me. Iris has a style that's very in your face, pop, written messages, big, day glow, bright. It was a cape that read, she's the boss. They were a great hit and it caught the eye of Bergdorf Goodman's Linda Fargo, and she wore it at the opening of her boutique within Bergdorf Goodman. I consider myself to be an artist. A lot of people say designer, but I consider myself an artist. I just say that I paint on a different canvas. I started off as drawing, and then I turned my drawings into paintings. It went from me, you know, painting on canvas, and I was like, hmm, I wonder how this would look if I painted on a pair of my shoes. Let me see how this would look if I painted on my sweatshirt, or ooh, maybe a dress. And I just, you know, started painting on clothes. I would make stuff for myself, my sister, my friends, and people would see us, and they would be like, oh, where'd you get that from? And I'm like, oh, I made it. So I'm just super excited about this show. I put together some favorite pieces of mine, vintage pieces, some new pieces, and I feel like these show a lot about who I am as a designer. My brain is all about uplifting and inspiring for women to be sexy, strong, beautiful, and comfortable with her femininity and power.